today, we're dressing the daily Inglewood family gangster bloods. And let me just give you guys a warning now. This one definitely ain't for the faint hearted. Let's get right into it. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. And the rap world is mourning the loss of a promising talent tonight, reacting on social media to a deadly shooting at a mansion party in Granada Hills. The man was shot to death last night on the 12,000 block of Longacre Avenue, which is an upscale area near Porter Ridge Park. KCAL 9's Christy Fajardo is live at the Devonshire Police Station in Northridge, or division rather, with the latest on the victim and the search for the gunman. Christy. Yeah, Elsa, for more than 24 hours now, police have been searching for clues, but say tonight they have no leads on a suspect or suspects who injured two people and snuffed out a promising talent. On August 20th of 2016, Justin Lachey, a rapper also known as Kid Cali, and an active member of the neighborhood Rolling 90 Crips, attended a house party held on the grounds of a large house in Granada Hills, California. The event was started at 2 p.m. and was settled to end at 8 p.m. had been advertised on social media and was attended by two to 300 people. The house, it was equipped with numerous exterior surveillance cameras at the gates and throughout the grounds, which recorded the entire party, including the arrival and the departure of the guests. 19-year-old Kenny Berdeen with the moniker Rampage, a lower Rampage, was a YG or young gangster belonging to the 92nd Street clique of the Englewood family gangster Bloods, arrived at the party at around 7.40 p.m. Security, they searched many of the guests before admitting them inside, including Kenny Bardeen, who was able to enter the party. But a King Foreman, also known as Too Much, a senior or original gangster member of the Englewood families, arrived at the party after Bardeen, was able to get into the party from Bardeen the trial court sentenced Berdeen to 50 years to life in state prison. But that's definitely not where the story ends. In fact, it's really just the beginning. Because at the end of that same year, the murder of a prominent member of the Inglewood family gangster Bloods, known as Red Bull, would intensify an already daily war going on with the neighborhood Cribs and the Inglewood family gangster Bloods, and allegedly lead to the eventual death of a prominent rapper known as Draco the Ruler. Before we can fully understand how this situation played out, we have to address the history of the Inglewood families. Let's get into it. Chapter one, history of the Inglewood family gangster bloods. Being one of the oldest bloods in Inglewood, the history and the foundation of the Inglewood family gangster bloods goes back way to the 1970s. Matter of fact, scratch that. We have to go back to the 1960s to fully understand the history of this game. During these years, the African-American population in Inglewood was slim to none. Originally, only housed with about 29 people of color. With their ground and for sure, wasn't having any Crips invading it. This is because groups like the Chain Gang would eventually become Bloods, which included founders of the Inglewood family gangster Bloods like Jan Brewer, Dirty Red, Tommy Arces, Lil Caesar, Slick Mick, and Junior occupied the area of Inglewood. And in that short period, became one of the first rivals of the West Side Crips in the early 1970s. And by the later years of that decade, everything changed with the rivalries becoming more abundant and more deadly than this street fight. For example, at a house party on July 23rd of 1977, the Inglewood families, amongst other gangs, the families and the H-Ray gangsters who are a crib gang that's branched off of the West Side Cribs got into a fight that quickly ended the party. But that situation definitely wasn't over with because the next day, the Inglewood families at Sentinel Park, and the A-Trade gangsters paid him a visit. But that visit, it was anything but friendly. The two groups got into a fight, 
which quickly escalated to gunplay from the HA Gangsta Crip, which resulted in the prominent members from the Inglewood families being taken out. And the HA, they definitely wasn't done. The next day, they pulled families were ready and ended up taking out two members of the HA Gangsta Crips. This situation jump started a war that played out deadly for both sides when it comes to the Inglewood family bloods and the HA Gangsta Crips. But that's just one rivalry. The Inglewood families have engaged in several wars with other gangs, including pretty much all gangs that belong to the neighborhood car, which quickly gave them the reputation of being one of the most deadly blood gangs in Los Angeles County. Yeah, their hatred for the neighborhood Crips definitely put them on each other's top rivalry list. In fact, it's even alleged that this hatred led to the death of Draco the Ruler. But to fully understand this situation, it's essential that we come back to 2016, a few months after Kid Cali's death. Red Bull was a prominent rapper from the Eaglewood family bloods. He was loved by his family, looked up to by his fellow gang members, and known for being a stand-up individual in his community. He lived his life pretty much like any other young man growing up in Los Angeles. He hung out with friends, played sports, and often went to parties around the city. But on December 10th of 2016, him and his friends went to the wrong party. And Mike Kilby Cannon, a Rolling Hunter Crip member, Jaden Boyd. A too greedy member immediately recognized Red Bull as a member of the Inglewood family gangster blood. And just as Red Bull's group reached the front of Draco the Ruler's car, gunfire erupted with the two Rolling Crip members equipped with a 40 caliber Glock pistol and a 38 caliber revolver letting off multiple shots while killing Red Bull in the process. His death intensified an ongoing war which was already deadly with several casualties occurring on the neighborhood Crip side and the Inglewood families as well. But it also birthed an intense feud with the Inglewood family gangster Bloods, the city of Inglewood, and Draco the Ruler. After the death of Red Bull, Draco, the Sting Team, and the Inglewood families would go back and forth dissing each other on several social media posts, through music videos, with Draco the Ruler sending subliminal shots at the Inglewood families, and even the whole city of Inglewood with his Inglewood diss track, and Ice Water Rock, a member of the Inglewood family Gangsta Bloods, responded with several diss songs and music videos and that Draco the Ruler and his Sting Team. It got so bad that Jacob the Ruler will often diss members in interviews, including a No Jumper interview where he referenced an alleged incident that occurred with Inglewood Family Games to Blood member Munchie B. Uh, About the peanut butter? Where, no, no peanut butter. My bad, my bad. That's Who got peanut butter? Other, that's a whole nother situation. What would you do if somebody put peanut butter in your ass? Oh my God. <sighs> well, it would oh really God. depend on the person. Yeah, I lied on you. How would that happen? Like, you blind. I'm just wondering this, like. After Red Bull's death, the Sting Team members and members of the Inglewood family bloods had only crossed paths a couple of times, including some fights in jail with Draco and Sting Team members claiming that they went into their fights. But one situation where they eventually ended up running to each other played out deadly. On December 18th of 2021, Draco and Sting Team members were at the Bank of California Stadium for the Once Upon a Time in LA Festival, where they were set up to perform. But on that same day, YG was at the festival as well, with a group of several interviews and podcasts, including one on No Jumper, where he mentions that he and his entourage take rap beef seriously, saying that he doesn't play back and forth when it comes to issues. Rap this and shit, cause like, if it's smoke, it's really smoke with us. We ain't playing. Mm -hmm. All that rap beef and all that shit. We don't, we not rap beefing. We really beefing. Mm -hmm. The homies gonna get you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like. And this night was a prime example of it. During the festival, the two groups, they ended up getting into it with each other with the altercation turning physical. And sadly, Draco the Ruler ended up receiving a fatal stab wound to his neck. The release of his new song, Go Crazy, and a spot on the Once Upon a Time in L.A. festival lineup with A-list headliners like Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent, it was looking like a good week for Daryl Caldwell. 
better known as L.A. rapper Draco the Ruler. But backstage on Saturday night, officials say he was stabbed in his neck while surrounded by a group and died of his injuries. Stabbing quickly spread throughout the packed Live Nation-produced festival, with fans trying to get away any way they could. Members of the L.A. Fire Department treated the injured artist, but the wounds proved fatal. And while no suspects have been convicted, it was widely rumored that his murder was a result of his beef with the Inglewood family gangster bloods in the city of Inglewood. Families, top rivals today. On top of that, they also go out at hard with the rolling 90s and the rolling hundreds. And though there have been some efforts to stem the rivalry among the Inglewood gangs by the Stop the Violence and Increase the Peace Foundation, founded by Khalid's show during the 1990s, the gangs still have a lot of hatred for one another. Other rivals of the Inglewood family gangster bloods include the 104 Hustler Crips, the Imperial Village Crips, and the Tungan Crips. And since January of 2013, a deadly war between the Inglewood family bloods and the Denver Lane gangster bloods erupted, claiming the lives of respected members on both sides. Beef with the Denver Lane gangster bloods. Before February of 2013, the Deverland Gangster Bloods and the Inglewood Family Bloods were friendly with each other. They hang out in each other's hoods, have each other's back, and often party together, which is exactly what played out on February 9th of 2013. The two gangs had a party at the Normandy Casino, and everything was going smooth to an argument which escalated to a fight broke out between the two gangs. But the situation, it was far from over with. About four hours later, Trevon Odom, a member of the Denver Lane Bloods who had attended the party, was murdered. And on February 12th of 2013, Inglewood family gangster blood member Clarence Grant Sr., also known as Big Clayron, was murdered. And that murder started an all-out war between the Inglewood family bloods and the Denver Lane Bloods, which led to several bodies being dropped on both sides. Like on February 13th of 2013, at about 3.20 p.m., John Wombs was driving to Los Angeles on Imperial, approaching Menlo Street when a man on a bicycle swerved into his lane, about 15 feet ahead. As Wombs braked, a man ran into the street and fatally shot the bicyclist in the back three times with a handgun. The shooter was wearing a black security uniform and a white t-shirt underneath. He appeared to be 5'10 to 6 feet tall with a medium build. His hair was in a short afro style and he wore glasses. Wounds watched the shooter run into a champagne colored Camry idling at the curb. And as the car pulled away, his horn honked several times, almost like a partying on a horn. And the murders, they still went over with. On February 15th at about 9 p.m., Beyond Hall was with Robertson at a commercial intersection near Vermont and Imperial, just north of the 105 freeway. Robertson, who was a wannabe gang member, was wearing the color red, a color which is associated with the blood gang. The two sat on a wall at a fast food restaurant until around 9.49 p.m. That's when a man walked up and asked Hall, where you from? Hall responded, I'm from Texas. So the man, he didn't ask Robertson, where he was from. But before he could respond, the man put out a gun and shot him several times. As Robinson lay on the ground, the shooter stood over him and fired at least twice more. He then walked away and got into a black Yukon. Charles Jeffries was stopped at the intersection of Vermont and Imperial when he saw two men square off. One man fired several shots at the other and a car soon after pulled up as the shooter jumped in. Jeffries followed the vehicle and obtained his license plate number. After that, he returned to the scene of shooting and gave a number to a Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy. In the meantime, Robertson died from multiple gunshot wounds. The surveillance video from a nearby liquor store depicted a black male walking southbound of Vermont and then crossing the street. Another black male was near the fast food restaurant. And during the altercation, the first man raised his hand and the other man fell to the ground. The first man quickly walked north of Vermont and got into a black SUV waiting at the curb. Investigating officers also located a second surveillance video. 
a former Inglewood police officer who had known Donnie Lee Walton Jr. for about 20 years and knew he was an active Inglewood family gangster blood member, viewed it and identified Walton as a shooter. In addition to the video evidence, Walton's ex-girlfriend also helped to incriminate him. Asian IG had known Walton for over 10 years and they had a child together. She broke up with Walton in 2008 and had last seen him in 2014. Najee viewed a series of still photographs from one of the surveillance videos and testified that they were Walton. Also, on September 10th of 2014, a detective interviewed Clarence Grant Jr., claiming Walton brought his father's Yukon after his father's murder, as well as Grant Jr.'s cell phone, saying Walton said, Hey, let me use your phone. You stay with your mama. I don't want you to be a part of nothing. After the interview, the detective then put Grant Jr. in his cell with two undercover law enforcement officials. And while there, he told the man, the detective showed me a picture of the big homie at the gas station where he did the little shit. They got blood on camera and all that. Grant Jr.'s reference to blood was to Walton. He also said the picture they got is the car pulling up to the gas station and Nutty Boy getting out the car. They got Nutty Boy getting out the car. Ultimately, through the surveillance evidence, witness statements, and statements from his ex-girlfriend, the trial court sentenced Walton six terms of life without the possibility of parole, plus 65 years to life. Yeah, this nigga definitely ain't getting out anytime soon. That's just a few enemies of the Inglewood family gangster bloods. Over the years, these guys have developed a reputation of brutality against pretty much any gang that wasn't allied with them. Yeah, you know the Inglewood families is always up to no good. If you an op and you wanna live, nigga don't pass through their hood. Bars, nigga. Yeah, I'm back, bitch, stop playing with me. Nah, to fully understand why they have so many enemies, we have to go over who this gang is today. Who are the Inglewood family gangster bloods? The Inglewood family gangster bloods also known as the Family Gangster Bloods, are an African-American street gang located on the west side of Inglewood, California. Originally known as the Chain Gang, the families have been around long before the formation of the Crips. Their neighborhood, it stretches from Crenshaw Boulevard to Van Ness Avenue, around 77th Street to 94th Street. And geographically, the Inglewood families are the largest gang in Inglewood and have several cliques, with some of them including 77th Street, the 80s, 92nd Street, 94th Street, and a Ransom Gang. And like already mentioned, these cliques have more than a few enemies, but they also have a few allies they're known to get along with. For example, the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods have a close alliance with the Avenue Piru Gang, and their alliance is identified as the Family Rules. They also have a close alliance with the Mad Swan Bloods, known as the Family Swan Bloods. With other close allies, including the Crenshaw Mafia Bloods, along with the Sentinel Park Family Bloods. But that's just a few allies compared to the long list of enemies, which include one of the biggest gangs in Los Angeles. Our shit. America. The police. The Inglewood Division and the 77th Street Division, to be exact. That's because most of the area is policed by the Inglewood Police Department with a small portion of their turf laying on the 77th Division of the LAPD. Since the gang's foundation, there have been several gang injunctions and raids and they're taking down a gang, including a recent takedown occurring in 2018, which indicted 13 members of the gang. During the investigation, task force investigators determined that members and associates of the gang use established cliques to traffic firearms, powder cocaine, crack cocaine, methamphetamine, and other narcotics while engaging in violent crimes. In addition, task force members working with the Inglewood Police Department executed controlled purchases through which they acquired firearms, cocaine, ecstasy, and methamphetamines. The police, they aimed at several prominent members of the gang in hopes of slowing down the Inglewood family gangster bloods, with a few of them including Byron Sumlin, also known as Busy, who was charged with unlawfully engaging in the business of dealing firearms. It's also Jason Ainge, 
also known as J-Rush, who was charged with cocaine distribution, aiding and abetting, and being a felon in possession of firearms and ammunition. And Ronald Anthony Miller, also known as Get Down or Fetty, who was charged with cocaine distribution and aiding and abetting. But that's just a few activities the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods are known for. They have a lot of jackers and robbers affiliated with the gang. And while they definitely participate in a lot of petty thefts, this gang is also responsible for a lot of large-scale heists in Los Angeles and beyond, including a few where the gang allegedly stole more than $6 million worth of jewelry. Between early August 2014 and April of 2016, there was a series of 14 robberies and attempted robberies throughout the southern region of California, with one heist at a store in Century City Mall then more than $1.6 million in watches and jewelry. And involved one of the robbers firing a shot from a rifle at a security guard who was trying to secure the store. Overall, members of the conspiracy stole watches and other jewelry that was added up worth approximately $6 million. Investigators, they alleged that leading members of the heist selected jewelry stores based on their inventory of expensive watches including those manufactured by Rolex and Udemar Baguette. While also saying for help, the group recruited financially desperate young men to perform the robberies, often by promising large sums of money that they are successful. The organizers also planned the details of the robbery, including selecting display cases to be smashed and providing firearms, tools, disguises, and stolen cars that were used for the robberies. One of the organizers of this heist was Keith Marvell Watson, who was also known by his monikers, Green Eyes, and Fly Guy, who was an OG member of the Inglewood family Gangster Bloods. It's alleged that Walton, who the judge called the most dangerous, prolific, and incorrigible criminal who has ever appeared before the court, provided other Inglewood family Gangster Blood members with the necessary equipment for the heist, gave them the location with details in the jury stores and boutiques, as well as the location of the most expensive jewelry in each store, and even plan out escape routes in order to avoid law enforcement after a successful hit on the store. Other highest leaders included Robert Reesley Johnson, who also recruited robbers, scouted the jewelry stores leading up to the robberies, and supplied firearms, hammers, backpacks, and other tools to the robbers who went into the jewelry stores, as well as Evan Scott, who was a gunman and tour of the robberies, and pepper sprayed an employee in the third robbery. And lastly, Jameson LaForest, who received watches stolen during robberies in Hollywood and Torrance and smashed glass cases during a robbery in Manhattan Beach. And these guys, they hit more than a few stores more than several times, including the August 3rd, 2014 robbery of Prestige Jewelers in Manhattan Beach, during which 19 Rolexes with the approximate retail value of 92,000 were stolen. The previously mentioned August 24, 2015 armed robbery of Rolex Boutique Gary's in the Century Mall, during which 40 Rolexes with the approximate retail value of 1.63 million were stolen. The August 21, 2015 armed robbery of Frederick H. Rubo Jewelers and Shops at Mission Viejo, during which 40 additional Rolex swatches with the approximate retail value of 595,000 were stolen. The February 7, 2016 robbery of Ben Bridge Jewelers in Oaks Mall in Thousand Oaks, during which 35 Rolex watches with their approximate value of 298,000 were stolen, and they struck again in less than a week with the February 17, 2016 armed robbery of West Time in West Hollywood, during which 15 baguette watches with their approximate value of 576,000 were stolen. It's also the February 29th armed robbery of the Ben Bread Jewelers in the Delamo Fashion Center in Torrance with 30 Rolex watches with their approximate value of $456,000 were stolen. And the February 22nd, 2016 robbery of West Time in Malibu, Greenwich, 66 baguette and Rolex watches were stolen with the approximate value of $1.42 were stolen. Yeah, it's safe to say 
These guys were definitely heavy hitters when it came to them pulling off these robberies. But their run came to an end when Walton and the other Angular family members were finally caught and prosecuted. And in the end, the jury convicted Walton and the other members of conspiring to violate the Hobbs Act by planning jury store robberies and participating in the robbery. With the federal judge sentencing the men to 55 years in prison. The crazy part about all that is that that's definitely not the only situation the Eaglewood family gangster bloods are responsible for. I found more than a few other stories. And trust, they're just as crazy as this. Yeah, Nakers was climbing on roofs to break in jewelry stores, robbing banks, and a lot more of the crazy shit. These guys, they're known for a lot. With some of the members even taking lives in order to get what they want, with the big situation occurring back in 2004. At approximately 3 a.m. on March 28th of 2004, Terrence Williams was with a group of men in the parking lot outside of a laundromat. Most of the men were pimps who frequently carried large sums of money. Gregory Van Poster, an Inglewood family gangster blood known as Tiny Buntry, a man named Castro, another person refer only to his D, a poster group. Poster, Castro, or D said, y'all pimping, y'all got some money? Immediately after that, one of the assailants who stood near a Cadillac attempted to reach to Wilms' pocket. At first, Wilms struggled with the assailant who attempted to reach to his pocket, but the assailant had a gun. Once Wilms noticed the gun, he tried to flee, but the assailant shoots Wilms as he was trying to run away. Unfortunately, taking his life in the process. But that's just one situation. Poster also went on to kill one of his ops later down the line. On July 6th of 2004, someone shot to kill LaShawn Hill. Hill's then girlfriend, Ebony G and Anthony B were present at the shooting, which occurred in a territory planned by the Inglewood families. More specifically, the shooting occurred outside Ebony's friend's house Danielle. Prior to shooting Hill, the shooter said, fuck crabs. The term crab referred derogatorily to a member of the Crip Gang, which was a rival of the Englewood families. The shooter pointed the gun at Hill and fired twice. At trial, both Ebony and Anthony identified Poster as a shooter. And prior to the trial, Anthony identified Poster from a six pack photo lineup and indicated that he was 75% certain of his identification. In the end, Poster was sentenced to two consecutive terms of life imprisonment without parole. And once again, that's just one situation out of the many that the Inglewood family gangster bloods have been involved in. These guys are known for a lot throughout Los Angeles and even beyond. Danger rating of the Inglewood family bloods. The Inglewood family gangster bloods are going to receive a danger rating of a 9.7 out of 10 based off of the gang's long history of violence in the area. And each of these stories told so far, this gang's brutality stuck out most to me. They're ruthless when it comes to their enemies and when it comes to getting what they want. Yeah, these family niggas, they known for a lot. And I don't think it's only in Inglewood because they're known to spend a few blocks. Bars, nigga. Nah, that's because this gang has had more than a few frontliners who strike fear in a lot of their enemies. Let's get into prominent figures to get a better idea of his members, though. Prominent figures. Been one of the oldest and biggest gangs in Inglewood, the Inglewood family gangster bloods have more than a few prominent members who helped make the gang one of the most feared and respected in this area. But first off, I found a long list of members who are no longer with us. A few of them include Javon Jackson, also known as Gigi, who was shot in Inglewood, Indian Red Boy, who was shot while live streaming a couple years back, Tara McCollin, also known as Lady Kickass, who died at the young age of 16 on October 21st, 2005, when she was shot and killed in Inglewood, Damian Watts, also known as Little Chopper, Joseph Wayne Jones, it's also Corey Harry Smith, also known as Big Snugs. Other deceased members include Darby, Abby, Active, Ace Bone, Lil Bully, Baby Diamond, Lil Dot, OG Green Eyes, Eddie B, Big J Bird, OG Clayron, 
Lady CK, OG Nasty Ed, Ooh Wee, Pie, Punch, Pumpkin, and Davion Gregory, also known as Red Bull. But we already mentioned was shot at a house party in Carson, California. Yeah, rest in peace to them and any other members who lost their lives due to their gang affiliation. And y'all let me know in the comments of any of the members who are no longer with us that they lames live on. In addition, the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods have a lot of other members who have made the gang what it is today. Some of them include Lil Caesar, who was a co-founder and helped come up with the name, Sinbad, Red Rum, G Spider, Big Knucklehead, OG Sawdog, Ja, Baby Dot, Buntry, Faye Jackson, who was a female OG, and Lil Hawk. It's also Munchie B, but to fully understand this guy and why he was known as one of the most feared Inglewood Family Gangster Blood members, we have to tell some of his alleged story. An incident allegedly occurred a decade ago, where Munchie B from Inglewood families was beat up and had peanut butter allegedly lodged into his rear end by members of either the rolling 40s, the rolling 60s, or the rolling 90s. It's said that when Munchie B got locked up in LA County Jail, CLs purposely put him in a crib door where Munchie B was sucker punched after a few head ups with neighborhoods and knocked out. They then dragged him to a different part of the bathroom and several NAC members while items from the commissary that snuck a broomstick and violated his rectum. It's alleged that all this caused an all out riot between neighborhood cribs and the family bloods. All this was due to the reputation that Munchie B was allegedly responsible for between four to 10 NAC casualties between the 60s and the 100s. And at the time, was the Inglewood family's most feared and active frontliner. Once again, all this stuff is alleged. It's just rumors and he say, she say around the city. These days, he's considered OG status for the Inglewood families and works for a program on steering black and Latino youth in Crenshaw and Inglewood away from gangs. There's also several other rappers. For example, in 2015, Inglewood Monster, a rapper affiliated with the Inglewood Family Gang, released a song titled Supposed to Be Bloods, featuring June Dog of the Diamond Riders, with gang ties to the Denver Lane Bloods, Red One 781 of the Avenue Pie Rules, and G Nut from the Brims. This song was inspired by the blood on blood rivalries that have spiked since the 2000s. Other rappers include Frost and the Snowman. Then kept talking too much, had to slime him out. Two shots to the stomach, he on time out. Bars, nigga. Nah, bruh's been dropping hits for a few years now. If you don't know about him, you definitely need to tap in ASAP. It's also 211, and bruh's definitely a local favorite. He's been at it for damn near a decade and has released a large amount of great music over the years. Y'all definitely need to check in with him too. And his little deuce. Got up out my eyes, he said I ran up out of handouts. I don't remember having my hand out. Mama's put me out for her mans, that's her mans now. She lucky ain't put her mans down. I was outside going crazy when she did that. Bought a blower, trying to push a nigga way back. Like, where you from? Where you stay? Where you live at? Uh, I don't know if I want to hear that. Bars, nigga. Now this nigga's by far one of the top rappers coming out of the families. And once he gets consistent, he's definitely going to blow up. In addition, it's White John. Bro hard too, kind of reminds me of a frosted snowman, but he definitely has his own distinctive flow and voice that sets him apart from the other rappers. Y'all tap in ASAP to take an idea of what I'm talking about. Other rappers include Maya Kodak, Riley B, and Ice Water Walk. But y'all let me know in the comments if I'm leaving out any other rappers. Let's get their music heard. The current state of the Inglewood family gains the bloods. Inglewood, California, has seen a huge shift in demographics over the last two decades. When it comes to any other city in LA County, this section has by far been the most gentrified. This area used to only house a form stadium, which was surrounded by several low-income houses, apartment buildings, and a few decent-sized houses. Now has a YouTube theater, the SoFi Stadium, the Hollywood Park Casino, and several other huge attractions, which naturally means rent skyrocketing which forced a lot of the locals to move away from the areas they grew up in. The cops harassment of the locals, at least the ones of color shot up, which also caused a lot of the locals to move away, and in turn, left a lot of the homes empty and waiting for the more wealthy to move in, which is exactly what played out. 
Still though, when it comes to the current state of the Inglewood family gangster bloods, they're still one of the most active gangs in Inglewood and they've even grown to the point to where they have branched off to other states. The Inglewood families evolved from a local Inglewood street gang to an organized national criminal enterprise with known cliques in New York, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Oklahoma, Missouri, North Carolina, Kentucky, Texas, St. Louis, and New Jersey. And in each of those states, the gang continues to thrive to this day. Anyways, that's it for the Inglewood Family Gangster Blood. Y'all got any crazy stories about these guys? Any close calls? Did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong? Y'all let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. If you enjoyed the video and got some knowledge out of it, or if you were part of the Danger Gang, don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all stay safe for dangers out there.